Hey, everybody, it's Bryce Zabel, and I am coming to you sort of in my battle dress, I guess, which is a suit and tie, which is what I put on for network interviews. I've just finished one of them, and good God, I, I mean, look, I'm glad that people are covering the story again, but I am continually shocked by how the people who are interviewing me haven't done the basic amount of homework on the issue. They are repeating the same stigmatized statements. They don't seem to be uh, worried at all about trying to up their game. So it's it's a little discouraging. I mean, I was just introduced on this other one by someone who said, and now we're going to talk to someone who says they're out there. And uh, later we'll have someone else who was taken prisoner and probed. Are UFOs real? Well, yes, I'm sorry, they, they've been real for a long time. And if you'd done any reading, you'd know that. You'd also know that UFO stands for unidentified flying objects. So to the extent that there are flying objects out there that we don't know what they are, then I guess, yeah, I, I guess they have proven that they're real. I don't know. The whole thing is a little irritating, um, particularly because uh, when you do a podcast, you've got your own time limit, of course. Uh, Ross and I on Need to Know typically will try to keep it under an hour, and we we do. Uh, 45 minutes is the sweet spot for us, but I know other people do podcasts that go on an hour and a half. In contrast, in the network world, you get five minutes. So when they come in and don't know anything, and they're asking kind of silly basic questions or actually questions that include falsities in them you know you got to be nice to these anchor people you can't just call them out in a in a hostile or uh, aggressive way and yet they just don't get it so when people say well these hearings better really have some new information in them i'm i'm saying to myself I don't know that that's exactly what has to happen i mean the truth of the matter is i would say without, well, I was going to say without exception, one exception might be Chris Cuomo. Of all the people that uh, interviewed me over the last couple of months, Chris Cuomo seems to have done his homework. Almost everybody else, nice as they might be, or important, or well-known, or whatever, they just don't seem very well-informed. But uh, Cuomo seems to have gotten down and done his homework. So congratulations to him. That's a, a, a real positive. So anyway, um, yeah. Uh, this all started for me really at the beginning of May or even a year before that, because I've been talking to Ross Coltart, my, my need to know co-host about a whistleblower. And he became very real uh, on May 8th when I met Dave Grush here in the Los Angeles area. Dave was here to record the next day, of course, uh, the famous uh, News Nation interview that Ross conducted exclusively for News Nation. But on May 8th, uh, we had all met for lunch, and there was concern that, I don't know, we might show up at the News Nation recording the next day and find out that uh, there were federal agents there to take Dave away or or to take us away. We, we really didn't know. So what we thought would be appropriate is give Dave a chance to practice uh, being interviewed by somebody in front of a camera, uh, and also to create kind of a safety copy in case something went horribly awry. So we actually recorded with uh, Dave Grush here uh, in in my house uh, on May 8th, which actually was the first on-camera interview, to my knowledge, that Dave Grush had ever done. Now, uh, over the course of time, people have said, well, why do you not put that interview out? And also, why don't you put out the entire News Nation interview? And that, uh, I understand, is frustrating. It's frustrating for me. Uh, I would like to put out the entire Dave Grush interview that we recorded here at my house. But uh, I think in fairness, uh, I want to just explain that when we put Dave on camera, the man was wearing shorts and it was very casual. And he had every expectation that this was just for practice. That's what we told him. So if I were to put that entire interview out right now, uh, that would be kind of unfair. The whole idea was for him to see, you know, how to calibrate his responses and stay within the agreement uh, that he had been given through the DOPSA process in the Defense Department. So uh, I've asked Dave Grush if we could put that whole interview out, and, and I've been told no. So I have to respect that. Now, News Nation is another thing. Uh, they should put their entire interview out because Dave Grush obviously knew he was being recorded. And uh, I think that they should put it out. But the deal that was struck uh, between Ross and News Nation was that they owned it. 
Uh, so they have chosen not to put the whole thing out. We have encouraged them uh, often. <laughs> Often is all I can say. We have often encouraged News Nation to put this thing out, and so far they haven't done it. We've said, well, give us the rights to, to put it out, and so far they haven't granted it. Now, we're not done, and we're still working on it, but the truth is you are going to get to see uh, Dave Grush uh, unfiltered and uncut tomorrow because he is speaking before Congress, and he will be under oath as I believe will the other witnesses be, but uh, for sure, Dave Grush, uh, Ross and I have now confirmed, will be under oath, which means, if you think about it, um, if he lies, if he goes before Congress and lies, you know, you can go to prison for that. So I think you should take very seriously what he's going to talk about tomorrow. And from what I understand, he will not only be talking about the things that he mentioned to uh, Ross in that uh, famous exclusive interview, namely that there, there have been crashes, uh, there have been retrievals, uh, there are intact craft, some of them were abandoned. I mean, think about that word, an abandoned intact craft. Uh, there have been reverse engineering programs from private aerospace, and yes, even the B word, uh, bodies that have been recovered of either pilots or passengers. Uh, and um, I, I don't think anyone is distinguished dead or alive, but from what I understand, some were alive. So we're in a brave new world. And I guess that's why I feel uh, that I want to talk about this right now. Uh, I, I'm happy to talk, by the way, to the, the news people. And I don't care if they're Newsmax or CNN or MSNBC or NBC or ABC or Fox or anybody. I really don't care. If somebody wants to talk to me about this topic, then I want to talk to them about it. Because I guess the way I look at it, all of us, red or blue, Newsmax or CNN or American or Chinese or Russian or whatever, all of us have more in common with each other than we do with a non-human intelligence. And by the way, get used to that, NHI, because Grush himself didn't want to use the word alien. He didn't want to imply that this was a conversation about origin or location, because uh, from his point of view, uh, he was unclear exactly what that was. I think the odds are extraterrestrial for at least some explanation, but there are others, uh, ultra-dimensional, uh, ultra-temporal, as in time travelers, or maybe they've been here all along, uh, under sea dwellers. I mean, there, there's a lot of different explanations. The ones that don't seem to wash very well these days are, frankly, that we made them. Uh, that seems to be pretty clear that we didn't make them. And we're pretty clear that Russia and China aren't making them. So I always say, do the math. If If none of us are making them, then somebody unusual, like a non-human intelligence, is probably making them. And if you say, well, how can you really say that? I mean, how do you know? Uh, maybe they're lying to you. Okay, I get that, except this thing has been going on minimum since World War II, uh, from the uh, Foo Fighters uh, toward the end of the war, through the ghost rockets in Sweden in 1946, to flying saucers in the U.S. in 1947, which evolved into UFOs, which have now evolved into, for, into UAP, which first stood for Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, and now stands for Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. All I can say is, uh, thank God we're getting around to having these hearings. I mean, I hope it is bipartisan. I mean, right now the House hearings look a little less bipartisan because it is Tim Burchett who leads the committee and it's uh, Anna Paulina Luna, uh, who is another Republican. And uh, there's also, um, let's see, um, who are all the, I, I'm blank. Oh yeah, right. Um, there is uh, Eric Burleson, uh, who is another Republican. And then there's Jared Moskowitz, who they brought out at that news conference as the 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 lone Democrat. He was almost like trotted out. So I, I do feel like in the House of Representatives, this tends to be more of a Republican issue. Although, again, Andre Carson, who is a Democrat, uh, had the first hearing on UFOs uh, in the uh, May of uh, 2022, on my birthday, by the way, which is May 17th. And so I was very happy that that was a great birthday present for me because those hearings uh, on UFOs were the first that had occurred since 1968. Uh, and by the way, just to give you an example of the kind of thing I've been up against on this, this network thing, I had a network uh, anchor uh, the other day. Uh, they had asked for my talking points. And so I had said, 
exactly what I just said now, that there had been two previous hearings, uh, one in May of 22, uh, which had Moultrie and Bray on from the Defense Department and basically maintaining plausible deniability. They didn't know anything. They'd never heard that UFOs were involved with nuclear. They, anyway, enough of that. Then the next one was in April of 23, and that is where Sean Kirkpatrick, the head of Arrow, basically said, nope, he hadn't seen any information that was definitive that these would be extraterrestrial. Okay, so there's that. Um, so we get to the place where this anchor person had been told in my talking points that those two hearings existed. And the next one before that was back in 1968, which translated in her mind to saying to me, well, there haven't been any hearings at all since 1968. What do you make of that? Okay, well, I want to be a nice guy. I don't want to tell her, excuse me, do you not even have time to read the email? But, you know, you have to do your best and, and explain that. The point is, there's still a lot of stigma out there. There's still a lot of, a lot of ignorance out there. And yet there is more reason at this point in our history to feel like we are getting closer and closer because everybody's talking about this now. And they'll probably still be talking about it after these hearings, because let's face it, um, even if you've heard about them before, David Grush and uh, David Fravor and Ryan Graves are three great witnesses who are going to be on their tip-top behavior to tell their stories. And uh, they'll probably add new details, or at least Grush will, if they'll let him. Uh, and and I just look forward to at least advancing the conversation. Now, people say, well, wow, is this full disclosure? No, I don't think it's full disclosure, but I do think it's something that is very interesting for us. I would call it confirmation. Now, that's kind of odd because, you know, I'm the guy that wrote the book with uh, Richard Dolan about a decade ago called A.D. After Disclosure, when the government finally reveals the truth about alien contact. OK, well, that was that was then. Um, and we were talking, Richard and I, about the disclosure moment, et cetera. And I actually now want to use a different word uh, than disclosure. I feel like confirmation is the next word we need because disclosure, particularly full disclosure, is like, wow, that is a lot. All right. Because what that means is somebody's going to actually say, here's what you need to know about the last 70 plus or 90 years, if you go back to the Italian uh, alleged crash of 1933. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It's going to take a process. The very uh, thing that uh, Schumer and Rounds have put into what will be the next uh, NDAA, uh, National Defense Authorization Act, is about declassifying documents. So it's a process. We are definitely in a process. The word I want to use, though, is confirmation. Frankly, the thing that would get everything started and and help people get over the the I guess ontological shock, which is the term of the moment people like to use, would be if we simply had relevant people in government or in the know in one way or another who simply confirmed the basic uh, idea that we are not alone. They are not up there waiting to communicate with us by radio signals. No, that we don't need SETI because they're here. They're here right now. They've been here for a while. They fly around in, in our space. They fly around in our atmosphere and they swim around in our seas. And they seem to do all three pretty damn good with the same vehicles. So we have, uh, we have work to do to tell ourselves full disclosure, but confirmation would at least get this issue where the people who are in in our media who are supposed to know something about something would actually go, oh, wow, that's interesting. Uh, we've had confirmation that we're not alone and that they're here. I would assume some of these assignment editors would get off their backsides and, and try to get to work on this with a little more vigor. And I would assume many of the reporters and the anchors who seem to be so freaking clueless right now so often would uh, try to bring their game up. And it would mean that places like the New York Times and uh, the Washington Post, which could do more to cover this. I mean, it is the biggest journalism story of all time, and it it's going to remain that way, I would assume. So I would think that they would want to get together and start really trying to cover this. And there ought to be a, a fast run toward journalism to try to make all this uh, come together. And I hope that happens. So 
those are kind of some of my feelings. I do think it's important for us to manage expectations. A lot of, like I said, a lot of what you're going to hear is familiar to you, but think about your family members and your friends. It may not be familiar to them. And if you can just turn them onto this link to the hearings, have them listen live if they want, or at least share the link afterwards, they're going to, they're going to, come up a level. So this these hearings are about preparing the battlefield for disclosure more than anything, and they are a predicate to future hearings. And um, I guess I guess the thing that I really want to say is that um, it's it's time to get our heads in the game because this seems to be really on. And I've been on this journey of of personal discovery pretty much. Well, the first UFO story I ever covered was as a hippie newscaster at a radio station in Eugene, Oregon uh, in 1975, and that was the Travis Walton case. And uh, of course, uh, during that uh, and, and, and after that time, I've stayed interested, but I really didn't get committed to the study of it until uh, 1987, 1988, when I wrote my first screenplay about it. That was something that was called Official Denial and became the first original film the Sci-Fi Channel uh, ever produced. But think about that. So from 1988, 98, 2008, 2018, 30, 35 years. It's been 35 years that I've been looking into it. And I don't need to be convinced they're real. Of course, they're real. And I have some theories about what they are, but I'd like to see my theories tested. And I'm sure many of you would too. So, okay. Let's cross our fingers. I'm recording this on July 25th of 2023. We're about to have hearings on July 26th, tomorrow, 2023. Let's hope that they are what we hope they are, which is the starter's gun to get this job done and get us on to the next phase. So as I always like to say, I believe no matter what it is, and I know there are probably parts of it that are a little dis, uh, discomforting, a little ontological shocking, but I believe we can handle the truth. And even if we can't, we have to handle the truth. So I'll leave you with this. People get ready. It's time.